Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comments section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. I know I did with my little baby. It's just me and Jaden all weekend. And so in today's video, I'm going to be talking to y'all about Lawrence Paul Anderson, a 42 year old man of Oklahoma. Have y'all heard of this story? I'm sure that y'all have because y'all have been blowing up my DMs, my emails and every other place sending me this story and wanting me to report on it. Now I already had my eyes on this. I kind of was wanting to wait until more information came out later. However, at this point, I kind of think in my personal opinion that I may know about what happened. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you guys the story briefly. Surprise, by the way, for your Monday video. Hope you had on your notifications. If you did, I'm sure you were one of the first ones here. Thank you. But anyways, I'm gonna tell y'all the whole story and then at the end, I'm gonna give y'all my opinion about what I think happened. So, Lawrence Paul Anderson, 42 years old of Oklahoma, allegedly had a long criminal history it is said that he had been arrested over the years from different things to substances, possession, selling, DV. You guys know what DV is, right? And different charges like that. According to a couple articles that I found, it said that in 2017, he got sent back to prison. Okay, so the word back to prison leads me to believe that he has been to prison before. Now in 2017, why he got sent back to prison allegedly was because he was on parole and that he got caught with a firearm and more substances. So I don't know how y'all work it over there in Oklahoma, but I know here in Florida, they do not play about you being a convicted felon on parole too and having a firearm. Like here in Florida, baby, it's, you might as well just kiss your butt goodbye. You don't even got to hurt anybody. You could just have it in your car with you and it is over, okay? But... Nevertheless, so this happened, he got violated of his parole in 2017 and his parole officer actually went to court and allegedly told the judge that he was a danger and a threat to not only society, but also himself and that he needed to be taken off of the streets. So he was sentenced to 20 years or finish out a 20 year sentence or whatever. It was a 20 year sentence that he had at this time. So he goes on down the road to prison. In January of this year, just after serving a little over three years, he was released from prison, part of some sort of like mass prison release that they were doing over there in Oklahoma. And he was one of the people chose to be released. More on that later, my opinion on that. And you guys know I've been to prison myself, plenty of videos on my channel. If you guys wanna watch, they're linked down below. So I feel like I have a been there, done that type of perspective, but we're gonna get more to that later. So anyways, he's released in January of this year after serving only a little over three years on a 20 year sentence for violating his parole with a firearm and drugs. That sounds so crazy to me. So he gets out in January and he goes to live with his aunt and uncle. I know that his uncle was like 67 years old, not quite sure how old his aunt was, but they took him in because they love their nephew and they wanted to give him a place to stay so he could have a fresh start and get on his feet and, you know, just live a nice normal life, right? On February 9th, actually, I don't even think it was a month after he got released. I think he got released in January 18th and then by February 9th, not even a month later, he allegedly stabbed his neighbor, Andrea Lynn Blankenship, who was 41 years old to death in her home. How he got in her home, it hasn't been released yet. Maybe she invited him in, maybe she knew him. Maybe he went in there, but she was 41 years old. She was his next door neighbor. He goes in there and he stabs her to death. Now, after he stabs her to death, he cuts out her heart, 
which mind you guys is not easy to do, okay? He takes her heart home to where his aunt and uncle live and where his aunt and uncle, his elderly aunt and uncle, they have their four-year-old granddaughter spending time with them or doing whatever, she was there. And he starts cooking up his neighbor's heart with potatoes. So he's just standing in the kitchen, cooking up this, this heart of his neighbor that he's killed with potatoes. And he said that he cooked them to release the demons. Then he allegedly tries to feed the heart and potatoes to his aunt and uncle and their granddaughter. It has not been clarified if they ate it or not, if they knew. I mean, I could just imagine what it smelled like in that house. Like, oh my gosh, what a nightmare. After he was done with that, he goes on to stab his 67-year-old uncle, killed his uncle, stabbed their granddaughter who was four years old, killed her, and then stabbed his aunt. Now, his aunt did survive. She was the only survivor out of the three. Devastating, you guys. Devastating. And Lawrence was arrested later on that day. Now, when he was arrested, they took him to, I guess they took him to the jail first. And then for whatever reason, they decide to take him to the hospital for treatment. They said for treatment. More on that in just a second. Two days later, while he was in the hospital getting his treatment, he allegedly confessed to what he did to his neighbor. And then the authorities went to his neighbor's house, went in the house and found her body in there. She hadn't been found yet until he confessed while he was in the hospital. So she's, her body was just laying there like open, whatever else. Lawrence was charged with three first degree murder charges, a maiming charge and assault and battery with a deadly weapon. He went to court just a couple days ago. I guess it was like a bond hearing or bond reduction hearing or his first appearance in front of the judge. And it is said that he was in the courtroom sobbing, crying, and he said to the judge, I don't want no bond, judge. I don't want no bond. Don't give me no bond. And he is scheduled to have a mental evaluation to see if he is competent to stand trial or to go to court. My thoughts on this, and by the way, please research everything on your own because this is all pretty fresh information and you just don't know how much it's going to change. Again, all my sources will, leave link, will be linked down below. What I think happened... I think he had a substance abuse problem, okay? Now, it is alleged that he had a crack problem for many years. However, I have known plenty of people that have been on that stuff for decades, and they ain't never done nothing like this, okay? There is plenty of people that strung out on that stuff and have been whatever that don't do stuff like this. I personally think he got into something else, some PCP, some bath salt, some something, some kiss, some of that special case stuff that y'all talking about, whatever it is. It had to be something else in my personal opinion. And I think he completely wigged out and did all this and then ended up, I think they arrested him when it was done. And then I think that he was probably going nuts. Again, this is just my personal opinion, probably going nuts or whatever in the jail. So they transport him to the hospital for treatment. And there, as he starts to sober up two days later, things start coming to him of what he did. And that's why I think he was sobbing in court, crying, saying that he didn't want no bond because the guilt's probably overtaken him, which it should. Now, I want to say this, and none of that mean like, first of all, how you get out after three years on a 20-year sentence and you've done violated your parole with a firearm. Now, I ain't mad at him about it because any old, you know, felon or person in prison, if they give you an opportunity to go get out, you're going to walk out the gates. So that part's not his fault. I'm wondering, did Oklahoma not have anybody else that they could have released? You know what I mean? Was there not anybody else there? Okay. Another part which makes me think that this was all probably substance abuse related was because in order for him to get released like that, he had to have good behavior in prison. If he was in prison for three years or a little over three years, he, you know, in order for them to decide they were going to let him out, he had to be well behaved in there. So I don't think it's a mental issue because if it was a mental issue that made him do this, he would have had some sort of episodes in prison, but he didn't. So I think he got out and got on whatever stuff he did. And and you know what? That happens, you guys. I I was never in jail or prison with somebody that went to that extreme, but I was definitely in there with women who were so messed up. They did something crazy, and then they go to jail, and then they're like in a sleeping comatose 
for a week and then they go through their withdrawals and everything. And then when they're done, they realize, oh my gosh, I did this. And like, that sounds like a nightmare to me. See, when we talk a lot about addiction and substance abuse and stuff, we talk a lot about like being addicted and losing your home. And you know, you see intervention on TV where people are looking a certain way, but we don't really talk a lot about like people that actually do crimes while they're out of their consciousness or their right mind. And then they have to pay for those crimes later. Something to like this extent, like I cannot imagine too how his aunt feels. She took him in, you know, to, she tried to do the right thing. And then he took out, he killed her husband and her granddaughter. And then imagine the grandmother who survived her child. It was either her son's daughter or her, or her, or her daughter's daughter. Like, they send their child to grandma and papa or grandma and grandpa's house. And the uncle, like, devastating, devastating, you know? And it's so hard, too, because we're constantly talking about reform and prison reform. And we want, you know, to let some people out. But you guys, like, even just looking at his charges in the situation, I'm going, like, you didn't have anybody else. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they looked at it like it was all substance abuse because, you know, okay, it was drugs. Maybe he had the, the weapon because he was an addict. He got out and got right back on it. I don't know. There's just complete devastation in this case. I mean, even if he gets sentenced to life forever, like nobody wins in these cases like this. Nobody wins. You know what I mean? So I don't know, you guys. That is that case. Again, I will leave everything linked down below. What do y'all think? Do you think it's a case of just mental health? Do you think it's a case of maybe some somebody that just lost it for a minute? You think it could be substance abuse related? What do you guys think? <sighs> Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, my loves, please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys.